Hey, yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, let's talk about one of the higher order kind of ideas, map control and vision control, which are not necessarily the same thing. They're very similar, but not always the same thing. We are here on D-Day, and I've spawned into the north spawn and headed up to the middle. We'll talk about that in a minute while I'm going there, but let's discuss map and vision control just a little bit. There are some channelized maps where vision control is not as important. It's more of a map, map control situation. What I mean by that is you control certain choke points. There's not a lot of vision to be had there as far as crossfire goes, but you have good map control based on your position. Or you've got maps like this in the center spot where you can get vision and map control. You can see that we're working this guy in the middle. The 12T has come up and attempted to take the middle, and I am trading a few hit points and taking some risks, but I'd love to kill this guy because he's really overexposed. He's attempting to get some vision control, but unfortunately they don't have enough map control to do that right now, which means they don't own this center part of the map, which is critical to this map, which will help you get both vision and map control. So we'll take him down. I do trade some hit points for that, probably more than I really wanted to, but I kill that guy. So let's take a look at this map right here. It's not channelized. This is one of the more open maps where you can get back and forth. And while it does have two lanes, kind of the 3-4 lane and the 9-0 lane, because of this center bowl area and the fight that goes on here, swinging both to the east like I'm doing right now and then to the west as required, it ends up being a more open map. And in order to gain map control, you've got to control this middle spot, which also, in the case of this map, gives you some vision control more hand-in-hand -hand for a map like this. And there are several maps like this. Proc, Malinovka, those kind of more open maps with more opportunities to cross, fire, and flex. So as I am at least contesting this, I will not say that I own the map control here, but as le at least as we are contesting this, it makes it more difficult for them to come up to the side of the bowl that I'm on, which is right here, without getting hit. Now, if I wasn't here, and literally I'm the only guy, literally, that's an overused word, isn't it? I am the only one on my team making this happen over here. With the exception of potentially the Leopard PT, and now the other medium that's moving up, which is a Pershing, and here comes a Scorpion. So those guys are all sitting back there and sniping. Had I not been there, that would have allowed the enemy to get into this bowl, get up into these bushes, and extend their vision control into this area, and allow their guys to move up and take shots at our guys in the back. As it was, I'm contesting, but pretty soon you're going to see me start to own the center bowl as they start to lose guns and hit points. You'll see that the enemy tanks, the Progetto, is, are doing basically the same thing that I'm doing over here with a shot and actually sneak one into his top turret right there, the top of his turret. Those three are basically doing the same thing that I'm doing, but they're being quite timid about it. In addition to that, the Pershing and now his buddy, used to be the Leopard, who's dead, and now the Scorpion G, are keeping them honest from coming around that corner. Now I can kind of come up here, and I don't have anybody up in these bushes stopping me from doing this, and I can take a look around, and now I'm going to get aggressive. And I'm going to extend both map control and vision control to the south and start to get to positions where they can't stop me from shooting them. And right here, so we get this guy coming across, a little over-aggressive there, miss him, the danger here, of course, is now I'm opening myself up to the TDs, which are sitting in the back. And the KR, I don't know if he actually doesn't know I'm there. I guess he just didn't realize it. He actually turns around. I'm going to come up and over. I'm going to try to get a shot on him, and I eat a shot. So a little over-exuberant there. Probably, had I had enough time, a better spot would have been to come up over this way and not expose as much of my tank by coming up over top. But as it was, I get a shot on this. And I need to clear out this KR because the KR is the only thing that's stopping me from really owning this piece of the map. And what that means then, which I've mentioned several times, but you can see it start to develop here, is once I get map control and use my vision control, then the enemy is in a very bad spot because they've lost the use of that map, that maneuver area, and they're not able to spot us and we're able to spot them. This is a critical part of this game. This 430 is going right at me. So I just decide, you know what, it's time to skedaddle. I take a hit from him. And he knew, right? He knew I had to be taken out. I was also a little overextended right there. He knew he had enough guns to do it. I get punished by the KR. Actually, he missed me or bounced or something. And I'm able to get away. 
That takes care of the KR because we have started to win the 4-5 line and shots are coming in from that way. Their PT, Leopard PT, sits in the back. This is a killer for a team. That is a great tank, and had it been forward doing something, the result over here on this center bull area may have been quite a bit different with his gun in the right part of the game. So he's just kind of sitting there holding down in a silly spot that looks good, but it's not really. He sees me, and I'm going to go ahead and get in and out of the way. I get spotted right there, and now I'm going to work back over towards this center spot and start to use this position that we've been able to gain. You can see that the Pershing has pushed past the position as well, so I am unlikely to be pushed out of it, and we've got quite a few more guns in the game. It's 11 to 7, and this is really cleanup time, but you can see then what the effect of gaining, I, just, that was, I don't know what happened right there, what the effect of gaming, gaining map control and vision control is. Initially, I went to the middle just to stop them from getting it. It was quite neutral for a while as we battled and we started to, each side started to lose hit points. I was able to push in and use it a little bit, maybe a little bit early, or potentially you could call it on time, but the enemy saw the opportunity to come in there and change the fight and they attempted to do that. I think if the 430 had been a little more aggressive, he might have been able to take me down, but there were still a couple of my guns sitting over on the east side that could have punished him as well. So that's also one of the benefits of gaining map and vision control is if you do get pushed and you still have some guys in the back who have moved up into shooting positions, then they can punish anyone who tries to push into you. And that's one of the reasons why it's so critical if you're going to be a sniper, it drives me crazy, in a medium or heavy or whatever, that you follow the push. You follow your tanks as they gain map and vision control so that you get to places where you have shooting lanes and, of course, TDs, which I, I left out of the first place because I was just trying to dissuade mediums and heavies from doing that kind of thing. TDs especially, though, and they're often very bad at it because they just don't think or recognize what map control is in order to move forward. A lot of times they'll understand the vision control piece where, okay, I have a spotter out front. I know I have lanes of fire from this position on the red line or near the red line. What they don't grasp is the idea that as the map and vision control moves forward, they have also got to do so, so that their gun stays supportive of whatever his frontline units are doing. Instead of sitting back there, then your frontline units get whittled away because they're pushing into the enemy's TDs with no support, and all of a sudden you're down the last guy and five coming at you. That's kind of how it happens with TD players who don't understand when it is to move forward. But there's a long discussion right there, obviously, also dealing with TDs, but in general, just trying to explain to you what map and vision control means with a little example right here. And again, not an amazing game. I got three kills in 2,527 in uh, a tier eight, so bottom tier on a two tier. Not too bad, especially for the new Type 59. This is after the buffs, so I, I really quite enjoy this tank now after the buffs. It was good before, it's even better now. Things to think about as you're playing this game the strategic piece of it is extremely important. The positioning piece of it and why we position. There's, it's one thing to say, hey, you've got to have good positioning. It's another thing to say, look, this is the map and vision control piece for why you are positioning. Some of the things you need to look for to change your positioning, to move forward, and why it's important to do so. All right, guys, that's all I got on that. I want to thank you for tuning in. As always, thanks for your support of the channel. Keep it coming, and we will see you.